Hello Internet, welcome to another antenna tutorial. In this tutorial we are discussing horn antennas. Horn antennas are extremely important in microwave transmission and reception. Now we know that carrier of microwaves are waveguides. So before we start the study of horn antennas we should be aware of the theory of waveguides a bit. Now as far as the definition of horn antennas is concerned they are simply constructed by flaring out dimensions of a waveguide. Now what happens is if we understand the structure of a waveguide it's a hollow metallic enclosure if we talk about a rectangular waveguide it has a matchbox structure and we know that it has two dimensions A and B now these dimensions are pretty small they are in the order of centimeters uh, the reason behind those small dimensions are the ability to propagate microwaves in these waveguides. Now what happens is these waveguides are carrying signals in the range of gigahertz or in other words they have wavelengths of few centimeters. So if a waveguide is carrying signal inside it and if it has to radiate that signal into free space it has to match the impedance of free space the impedance of free space is 377 ohm which is fixed and most of the waveguides because of the virtue of their dimensions have intrinsic impedance of around 50 ohms plus minus 10 so there is a huge mismatch of impedances when we talk about the signal going out straight from a waveguide into free space so what is the solution? What we do is we gradually increase the dimensions of a waveguide. What we intend to do is we intend to increase this A gradually and we intend to increase this B also gradually thereby resulting in a horn like structure which has enhanced A which can be called as capital A now and enhanced B which can be the superlative of the height of a waveguide. Now by doing so by increasing the aperture or the mouth of the waveguide we are trying to match the impedance with that of the impedance of air. <clears throat> now typically the dimensions of A and B are going to be some multiple of small a and b. They can be three or four times small a and b. And that results in the increased internal impedance of the waveguide or the antenna so as to say because this waveguide no longer remains an ant this this type of waveguide no longer remains a waveguide it is known as a horn antenna because of this attached flaring now the construction of horn antenna is 
determined by how much flaring we can do how much how much flare angle can be set so there are limitations on that so we'll study about that now if we look at the side view of a waveguide we see that the length by which this waveguide is increased is known as L which is known as flare length and the angle at which flaring is done the angle at which gradual increase of this dimension A happens is known as flare angle now I've put a subscript E on this flare angle now it is very important to understand that whenever we do flaring of this dimension it will be known as flaring of E plane and whenever we do flaring of the broader dimension it will be known as H plane flaring so now the geometry of this horn antenna can solve a lot of questions and the geometry is pretty simple now if we use Pythagoras theorem on this right angle triangle and if we ignore lambda e square term after opening this bracket then we can find out the flare length in terms of the enhanced mouth dimension <clears throat> now please understand the flare length at this side is going to be a little larger than the flare length at the center of the mouth because we want to keep the mouth straight so there is some curvature attached which causes a difference of flare length and that difference is known as delta E in case of E plane flaring and it causes a difference of delta H for H plane flaring. Now depending upon what dimension do we flare there are different types of horn antennas for example we can simply increase the broader dimension of a waveguide we can simply in keep on increasing A keeping B constant uh, I've got some illustrations now what I'm talking about is this case now this dimension is A and I'm not sure if you can correctly visualize this 3D image which is not really well made but this smaller dimension is A and if I'm just increasing this smaller dimension keeping the other dimension B constant B is still B here after flaring but A has become capital A now this type of flaring results in an antenna which is known as E plane sectoral horn 
and similarly if we uh, this thing remains A as it was here and this thing increases its height increases then we get an H plane sectoral horn but the most popular is uh, the one which increases flare length in both directions A and B uh, which results in cross-sectional or <coughs> or it is known as pyramidal horn and in most of the cases we are going to be dealing with this type of horn antenna where both A and B are flared our normal, normal waveguide is increased in dimension in both A and B and this is an example of circular waveguide being flared and it results in conical horn the geometry of these horn antennas is pretty simple but an understanding of flare length and delta E now delta E and delta H they are in common language can be thought of as E plane flaring difference and H plane flaring difference now they have they have a limitation like you cannot increase or you cannot keep delta E to be greater than uh, 0.20 lambda where lambda is operational frequency and I'm not sure about the value of delta H I guess it is 0.35 delta or these are interchangeably used but uh, I'd like to make a special mention here that they have a cap on their maximum value so you cannot go on and increase the flare length indefinitely because you have a cap on delta E this length and delta H uh, if you flare the other side and now the most important formula the gain of the horn antenna the gain of the horn antenna is 4 pi a upon lambda square into e a now a is area of aperture which is capital A into B this will be a rectangular thing in most of the cases and lambda is operational wavelength EA is aperture efficiency and similarly the directivity can be calculated with gain and that's about it uh, the fundamental difference between horn antenna and the other antennas is uh, the aperture associated with them the more aperture associated with them the more flaring we do the more gain we can achieve now if you look back into the definition of the horn antennas it is not just flaring out the dimensions of a waveguide it also increases directivity and improves matching the directivity and gain is increased because of 
enhanced area of aperture and improved matching with air is also happening because of the same reason and thank you so much for watching this video i hope this video helped you have a good day and a good life bye